Okay, thank you. Um, so, we, yes, we had just uh, gotten started. And on slide four, um, one of the things is that the CMS has a 542-page manual known as the Conditions of Participation, and they have section numbers or uh, tag numbers and uh, they're updated uh, more frequently. And as we walk you through, uh, we will talk about the new changes. And we don't know what the tag numbers will be for the new changes because they haven't implemented that. So um, we will talk about that. Um, so anyway, how it ends up into the manual is that first they publish them in the Federal Register. Then they add interpretive guidelines so we as hospitals will know. And then they have a survey procedure. I always get asked questions about how do I uh, make sure that I'm up to speed um, and keep abreast of all changes. If you have one or two people who can go out and subscribe to the Federal Register, uh, that's a good way to keep up in the future. Uh, it's free. We used to have to pay money for it. There's the website. And then when these end up, again, these new discharge planning standards, they are not in the hospital manual yet, but they will be. And when they are, this is the website. Uh, where you can always get the most current manual. And these standards do affect both hospitals and critical access hospitals. And at the top of slide number six, you will see that I have the email address that you can email CMS, hospitals, scg, at cms.hhs.gov. If you are a critical access hospital, instead of hospital, it's just CAH. So this is fabulous. You can write it, uh, send it to CMS, uh, get a copy um, in writing. And for, a, for critical access hospitals, uh, you would scroll down and click on W, and that's where the critical access hospital <coughs> manual is located. Now, uh, as I mentioned, CMS will uh, issue interpretive guidelines to reflect these new changes. Uh, some of the tag numbers, uh, some of the uh, uh, tag numbers have a survey procedure. Not all of them do, but these Thank will be updated. So much. Yep. Is that, is that working? I, I, I think so. Um, uh, if you can all mute your phone. Hello. Um, uh, please press star six. Uh, we're getting someone's voice. Um, and Gopal, if you can mute the group as a whole, that, that, would, be, that would be fabulous. Uh, anyway, one of the three worksheets that we have um, is a discharge uh, planning worksheet. And of course, it, it will be updated um, to reflect uh, these new changes. Uh, Mary Ellen Palowich at CMS uh, is in charge of it. And I had talked to her a little while ago, and she said, oh, yes, when these come out. And the worksheets are very, very important because they really drill down as to what the surveyors are looking for and what questions uh, they are going to ask you. And in fact, at the end, uh, you will see the current uh, as a resource uh, discharge planning uh, worksheet questions. So one of the important things is the, um, is to monitor the CMS memo website because that is our uh, whenever they um, and I just got an email uh, last night from one of the four accreditation organizations uh, and they told me that they were informed by CMS that these interpretive guidelines and the survey procedures for these new discharge planning standards uh, will not be out until the spring. Uh, late spring or early summer. Um, that's a little disappointing because it means extra work for hospitals. Uh, optimal would have been, um, and, and in fact, that they've had four years to work on these. Um, so uh, as hospitals, we would have liked that when they came out with the new regulations, they could have come out with the interpretive guidelines at the same time, uh, but that, of course, did not happen. So if you monitor the website, most likely CMS We'll issue a survey memo, and that's where we can look for the uh, interpretive guidelines because we'll need to go back and and review them and and maybe do a little more, uh, you know, uh, you know, checking on that. Uh, the state operation manual. This is the website for the most current one, which is also known as the COPs. And uh, whenever you click on it, it will always take you to the most current one. <clears throat> so again, when they do make the changes. Uh, and if you have, you know, one or two people who go out uh, once a month and check, you'll be able to see those. And then this is the most current manual for critical access hospitals. And if you don't know who a critical access hospital is, they're 25 beds or less. 
and um, they can have a 10-bed rehab or behavioral health unit if they are. They're governed by Appendix A. I know that's confusing. It's just how they do it. Um, and they're usually 35 miles away from the next closest hospital unless they're secondary roads or mountainous terrain. And so this is the important survey website that you want to monitor. This is when we will first have an indication. And they'll issue a survey memo, and then they reserve to tinker with it. And when they get it in the final format, they will issue a transmittal. On that day, they will update the manual. So you can also you know, monitor that. And this is what the survey memo site looks like. And you just click on the one that you want, and up it will pop. And for some reason, when you go out to this, it does not give you the most current ones. In the middle is a column called posting date. If you double click on that, it will take you to the most current one. Uh, this is the transmittal website. And one of the things that has been very helpful uh, for us to you know, know, especially for those of us that teach this, this is like a treasure trove of information. But six years ago, CMS said, we are going to start providing data. It does name the hospital's name, full address, zip code, city, state. And, but it tells us what sections and tag numbers uh, that hospitals have gotten into trouble. So we now have about six years of data. On the bottom of uh, slide 15 is the website. It is an Excel spreadsheet. If you just want to look at why hospitals have been cited by CMS in your state, you can do this. You can slice and dice the data uh, however you want. Uh, you can look at just the last year. So the most current report that we have available is July 3rd of 2019. Now, I do want to mention that uh, we had some, ch we had a number of changes um, back into, you know, after the six-year report was issued, and some of those tag numbers were deleted. So, um, you know, we lost the data on those. But these are the current tag numbers on the left-hand side in the section, and on the right-hand side, you can see how many hospitals have been cited. So, for example, tag number 806. Remember, I showed you how to get a copy of the manual, and I mentioned that. The section numbers are, they're actually on the top left-hand corner of that document. And uh, so doing a needs assessment for discharge planning, 160 hospitals got cited. On this one, the big winner is TAG 820, where we, didn't, we failed to implement the discharge planning, 197 hospitals. And it brings us to a total of 1,118 hospitals have been cited uh, in the area of discharge planning. So we are seeing a lot more activity. And now that we have these new changes, uh, you can expect to see that also. There's also another website that you can go out. And these are in paragraph form, so it's a little easier to read uh, if you want to search for hospital inspections at hospitalinspections.org. So if you just put in like discharge planning, uh, it would take you to uh, each of those sections. Now, before we talk about discharge planning, let's talk about the IMPACT Act. The IMPACT Act is a federal law. It is a federal law that is in effect now and has been in effect since October of 2014. But what happened is there were some things in there that had to drive CMS uh, to promulgate these. So first of all, uh, say, for example, a patient comes in and is scheduled for a total hip. And the patient says to you, well, the doctor said that I'm going to have to go somewhere and get some care after I get out of the hospital. And, um, and so uh, I understand that my choices are uh, home health. Uh, and uh, there's a hospital in town that actually, one hospital that bought it out and made the whole thing an inpatient rehab facility. Uh, there are long-term care hospitals, although we tend to just send patients there, for example, if they're vet patients or they're going to be there for a long time. Uh, for that, or uh, the, the patient has a skilled nursing facility that was just built around the corner from her house that's advertised as a rehab center. And so what the patient says is, well, even though I'm a Medicare patient, I'm 65, I own my own business, and time is money, and I'm anxious to get back to work, and, um, and I'd like to know uh, what the um, average length of stay is uh, for each of these. Um, I'd like to know what the readmission rate is. And, complication rate, like pressure ulcers, we call those 
uh, we'll talk about those later as resource measures. And, uh, and I'm still concerned about cost, and I'd like to know, even though it's covered by uh, Medicare, uh, what the average cost is to rehab. And we would look at the patient and we're like, we have no idea. We, we don't have that kind of data. Well, CMS thought we ought to have that kind of data. Uh, Congress thought we ought to have this data. So one of the reasons for the IMPACT Act is these four that you see listed, home health, inpatient rehab, long-term care hospital, and skilled nursing facilities are what CMS refers to as the four PACs, again, post-acute care.